So, so far we have learnt how to identify proper axis of rotation and symmetry planes as the symmetry elements in different type of molecules. So, in this tutorial I will show you how to work out different or how to identify and locate different symmetry elements only including symmetry planes and proper axis of rotation. So, let us start with today's tutorial. So, let us look at this molecule which is the very simple molecule which we have been looking at which is ammonia right. So, you have NH3 right. So, this particular proton and nitrogen are in plane, this proton is coming out of the plane of the board and this proton is going behind the plane of the board. So, now if I see what different types of proper axis of rotations are present, I can also draw this as if I am looking from the top, it looks something like this. So, that helps me identify that there is a so, here I am looking from the top. So, now if you see that there is a proper axis of rotation with C3 order, right, with n equal to 3, which is actually perpendicular to, let me choose a different color. So, which is perpendicular to the plane of the board if I look from the top, or otherwise, you can say that this is my C3 axis. Okay, so this is I can write this as C3. So, in other words, either way we can we should be able to identify, and this is the only proper axis of rotation which is present in this molecule. Okay, so the operations corresponding operations will be C3 to the power 1, C3 to the power 2, and C3 to the power 3, right. So, this comes out of C3. Okay. So, now C3 to the power 1 is an independent operation. C3 to the power 2 is an independent operation, but C3 to the power 3 is actually equivalent to E. So, why we say that? So, this is very easy to see. If we do C3 on this, let us do C3 onto this. What do we get? and all the rotations will be anti clockwise so you have n h you do get equivalent configuration but the numbers are going to be shifted now so one moves to this position two moves to this position three moves to this position so this is c3 to the power 1 now i do c3 again so, I can say that my this operation will be C3 to the power 2, right. So, again I will get H, H and now 1 moves here, 2 moves here, 3 moves here, right. So, this is C3 square which is, so if I call this molecule as 1, this conformation or configuration as 2, this configuration as 3. So, 1, 2 and 3 are equivalent configuration not identical. So, if I do C3 one more time, what do I get? I get 1 here, 2 here and 3 here, right. Now, if I do this, this will be my C3 cube operation. So, this is C3 1, C3 1 on this, C3 1 on this, 2 times C3 done. So, this will be called as C3 square, 3 times C3 done. So, this will be called as C3 cube. Now, if you notice this one, this one has same orientation of hydrogens as in this one. So, I would call this as identical configuration. Okay. These two are equivalent to 1, whereas this one is identical to 1. So, then I say that because this is an identical configuration, uh, this particular or let me call it as fourth, okay. 
So fourth is an identical configuration to one. So I would say that C3 cube is actually equivalent to doing nothing that is doing identity operation. So in this case, if we list down the operations from C3, this will be C3 and C3 square, which are independent operations and C3 cube will not be an independent operation it will be equal to identity. Okay. Now let's go to little more complex molecule where we have more. Uh, okay. Before we actually do that, let's also see what are the symmetry planes present in this. Okay. So let's draw this molecule again in the same fashion. So one, two, three. Now if you notice that there is a plane which contains this nitrogen and hydrogen and this will be bisecting the angle which is H2 N H3, right? So I would draw this as plane of the board and call it as sigma V1, okay? Now, uh, if I'm looking at the molecule from top, I can say, I can draw it like this. It is very important to understand it correctly. So, this is one, two, and three. And now my plane is the one which is, now I'm looking from the top, so my plane would appear as a line to me. This plane, if I'm looking from the top, this view, then my plane would appear as a line to me. And now this plane would contain NH1, NH1, and will bisect this angle, H2, NH3, right? So this will be called as sigma V1. Similarly, there will be a sigma V2. So sigma V1, sigma V2, sigma V3. Right? These are the symmetry elements or symmetry planes present in ammonia. Okay. Now let us move to more complex molecules and look at proper axis of rotation and planes. So again, we have discussed this case, but let's discuss in more detail so that it is very, very clear. So one, two, three, four. Okay. So now what are the symmetry? What are the proper axis of rotations present? So proper axis of rotations there will be one c3 how many c3s will be present so let's try to draw it so if i try to see that there is a c3 axis passing through ch4 which results into rotation of h1 h2 and h3 so this is collinear with ch4 and rotates H1, H2, H3, right? So let's call this as one C3 axis. So this is my C3 axis. Similarly, I can have a C3 which is passing through CH1. So I will say that there is another C3 which is collinear with now CH1 bond. And now this will rotate the rest of the three hydrogens, which is H2, H3, and H4. So this should be very easy to see now, right? This is my second C3, and this will be rotating anti-clockwise like this. So H2, H3, and H4 will be rotated now. There will be another C3, which will be passing through CH2, and rotates H1, H3, H4. Similarly, the last one will be collinear with CH3 and it will rotate H1, H2, H4. So this is 
there should not be any problem in now locating the C3 axis. So there should be four C3 axis, independent four C3 axis. Now each of the C3 will give rise to C3 and C3 square operation. We have seen that in case of ammonia. So this will lead to operations. If we list down the operations due to C3, there will be eight C3 operations because each of this, there will be four C3 one operations and four C3 square operations. Remember that C3 cube operations will be equal to identity. So that will not be counted. So you will have four C3 elements and eight C3 operations. Okay. So now let us look at, is there any other proper axis of rotation in this? So let us see what all we have. So there is one C2 axis. I mean, not one, there are three C2 axis, but let us see how do we identify or how do we locate C2 axis in this one. To be able to locate C2 axis in this one, it will be easier if we draw the molecule like inside the cube. So let's draw this molecule inside the cube. Excuse me for the bad drawing of cube. So now in the center of this cube, the where the four diagonals will meet, this will be the carbon atom. Okay. And my four hydrogens will be oriented along the so from carbon to hydrogen like this and there will be two hydrogens which will be meeting at with these two vertices so now i should be able to identify the c2 axis so c2 axis will be present perpendicular to this top face of the cube like this okay this will be going if i'm going through carbon so let me draw it correctly so this will be something like this and passing through this so now this is actually bisecting which angle so if i label this as one two three and four so this c2 is bisecting h1 c h2 angle and simultaneously it will also be bisecting h3 c h4 angle okay so this is one c2 axis now let's see if we have any other c2 so if we carefully see that there is this particular face. So there is one C2 which is going through this face. So the horizontal face. This is my C2. Now this will be bisecting H2, C, H3 angle. And on the other side, this will be also bisecting H1, C, H4 angle. Now, there would be one C2 which is going from the front plane, center of the front plane to the center of the back plane, passing through carbon atom. So that will be bisecting H2, C, H4 angle and H1, C, H3 angle. Now, if you carefully notice that all six carbon hydrogen angles has been listed here so that means there is no other possibility of listing another c2 so that would mean that there would be three c2 axis and each c2 gives rise to one c2 operation so there would be three c2 operations so if we say that the operations it will be three c2 operations elements it will be three C2 elements and three C2 operations. So this tells you how your C2 proper axis of rotation will be oriented, right? Okay. 
now let's look at the planes in this particular molecule where the planes will be and how many planes will be there so now if we try to list down the planes we will see that there will be plane containing h1 c h4 and bisecting the angle between h2 c h3 right so there would be a plane which will contain h1 c h4 this one and it will bisect this angle okay so now if it has to contain one particular angle and bisect the other angle and there are six such angles that means there can be six such planes okay it will contain one of the angle and will bisect the opposite okay so for example if i am saying that it is containing h1 c h4 this one over here so if i am saying that it is containing h1 c h4 angle over here and it is bisecting h2 hc3 then i can say that there would be one plane which will be actually containing this and bisecting this right so vice versa it will be so let me mention that so this the second plane will be containing h2 c h3 angle and bisecting h1 c h4 angle right so same way if we list down all six angles there would be six sigmas present and these will be called as dihedral planes because these are bisecting the angles so six sigma d's will be present in this molecule so we are only listing down the symmetry planes and proper axis of rotation in different molecules so this is for tetrahedral molecule now let us go to even complex molecule which is octahedral molecule because there are the number of elements and operations are huge in that case so let us list it down let's first draw the molecule so let's see let's draw a generic molecule now all six bonds in this case are equal because this is an octahedral molecule right okay and then how do we get a sense of where it is so let's draw this draw a plane around these four b atoms so that we know that these five atoms are forming one plane and then this particular atom b and this b is actually coming out of the plane and this is going below the plane so let's say if i'm drawing it like this it looks like this okay so in other words if i try to draw it in a 3d projection it looks something like this okay so you have at the center is a and then you have four b atoms this is another way to draw so drawing is very very important because you need to understand the 3d conformation of the molecule otherwise you will not be able to draw the or write down the symmetry elements or symmetry operations present in this so let me also list down now another way to look at this molecule is which is very interesting so if i'm looking from this side okay so just see that this b5 so if i connect b5 b3 and b2 it forms the face of a equilateral triangle okay similarly b1 b4 b6 also forms the face of an equilateral triangle so if we look via equilateral triangles keeping equilateral triangles on the front face then how the molecule looks like it will be interesting to see that 
these are the equilateral triangles that we have drawn okay now this one is at the top because from we are looking from this side so you have b5 b3 and b2 and the one which is here is actually it looks like a star if you now see and the bottom is b6 b4 and this side is b1 and the center of these two triangles will be atom a right so now it will be very very easy to identify c3 axis of rotation so now if you see that there is a c3 axis which is passing through the center of these triangles these two triangles okay formed by b2 b3 b5 and b1 b4 b6 right so that way we can say that there is one c3 axis similarly how many now if we try to identify how many c3 axes are present so that will depend on how many equilateral triangles can we make out of this so similar to b5 b3 b2 and b1 b4 b6 we can also make with b5 b2 b6 right b5 b2 b6 and look from the other side this side no sorry not b5 b2 b6 yeah b6 we can make it as b2 b3 b6 okay the adjacent side and this one okay so if we let us try to count how many c3 axis will be present so there will be four such c3 axis so let us try to list them down so let's try to list the faces of the triangle that are formed by b atoms okay so one is b2 b3 b5 and b1 b4 b6 what are the other triangles which can be formed here so the other triangle is b2 b3 b6 okay instead of top we can now go to the bottom and the second phase thus will be b1 b4 b5 b1 b4 b5 okay so these are the two this side now similarly we can go from this side okay now that will be b1 b2 b6 and the corresponding at the back will be b4 b5 b3 okay now also b1 b2 will be forming another triangle with b5 so b1 b2 b5 and b1 b2 b5 and b3 b4 b6 b3 b4 b6 so these are the four c3 axis which will be present can we see did we miss any other axis mm, i guess no because we have covered all possible combinations so four c3 axis and thus operations will be number of operations will be eight operations remember each c3 will give you two operations so four c3 axis will give you eight c3 operations right so that is for c3 now let's see what else does it have let's draw this molecule again now there would be a c4 axis 
so c4 axis will be oriented along opposite opposite bab so that is the bab which is making 180 degree angle how many such babs are there there are three such babs right so let's keep the same nomenclature 1 2 3 4 5 6 okay so we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 so this is the one which is collinear with b5 a b6 okay then we have collinear with b4 a b2 and there is one which is collinear with b1 a b3 so there are only three such options because there are only three such uh, bond pairs which have 180 degree angle others will have lesser angle so that will not be a c4 axis so now if you do a c4 operation it will be like this right so this is my c4 axis so b1 will be replaced with b2 and so on similarly if i am doing c4 operation along this axis the rotation will be between b4 b5 b2 and b6 right so this will be forming as a plane and this will be my rotation c4 rotation okay now same way collinear with c4 there will be three c2 axis present now each c4 will give you how many operations two operations so c4 will give you six c4 operations okay and well this will actually give you because c4 will be one operation c4 square will be equivalent to c2 which is listed this one because this is the collinear axis then you have c4 to the power 3 as an independent operation c4 to the power 4 will be equivalent to identity operation so each c4 will give you six operations six c4 operations and collinear with c4 there will be three c2 axis which will give you three c2 operations now what else any other proper axis of rotation yes there are six more c2s what are those c2s any ideas so let me draw this molecule again because otherwise it will be difficult to annotate so now there will be six c2 which are perpendicular to the 180 degree angles formed by uh, these c4s so b5 a b6 okay now this perpendicular can be in two directions so you have basically what you have is this axis and this axis right so you have axis going through like this will be and will be c2 similarly so each of this will have two perpendiculars so all of this will be perpendicular to these three so b4 next will be b4 a b2 and third will be b1 a b3 so perpendicular to b1 a b3 will be passing through so if i'm drawing a line like this so it will be perpendicular to this one right so so six c2s will be present 
So now let's also list down the symmetry planes. How many symmetry planes will be present in this one? So planes are simple to see. The planes which are actually containing planes containing the 4B atoms and the central atom. For example, you have B1, B2, B3, B4. This plane will be called as sigma H. Similarly, you have B1, B6, B3, B5, B1, B6, B3, B5 and third one will be B2, B5, B4, B6. These are the planes containing 4B atoms and of course the, the central atom will always be there and these are three such sigmas, so three sigma h. Then planes, there will be planes containing 6C2s perpendicular to C4s. Okay. Now these are the 6C2s present. So for example, this C2, so there will be a plane containing this C2 and a plane containing this C2. Okay. So basically the planes which are dividing these planes. So this particular plane can be divided in two ways. So one way is marked in red over here and another way is marked in red over here. Similarly, these four planes can be also divided by two possible ways and two possible ways. So there will be six such planes which are called as six sigma d's. Okay. So I hope that these three molecules should be sufficient. Will give you enough understanding on how to locate different proper axis of rotation and planes. So if there are any troubles, we can again discuss during the interaction session. But the idea here is that if you list down all the atoms containing different symmetry elements, so you won't get lost and you will be able to list the exact number of symmetry elements present. Otherwise, if you just keep on imagining and write in air, then it would not take you anywhere. So it's better to list down all the atom numbers which are contained by a particular symmetry element and then try to find out how many such combinations are possible and accordingly write down all the symmetry elements and operations. Okay. Thank you very much. This is all for today. Mm -hmm.